of course, we start with our big story here. Israel declares war after a terrorist attack by Palestinian militant group Hamas, and the killing has not stopped. Hamas taking Israel completely by surprise over the weekend, launching thousands of rockets and sending ground troops targeting civilians within Israel's borders. The death toll rising, families desperately searching for loved ones and those that are missing in the aftermath of these attacks. So joining me now is a survivor of these initial attacks, 17-year-old uh, Burak Shum Shmuel. Uh, you're currently living in Israel. You're originally from Colorado, uh, as am I. And I, I just wanna extend a hand and support. And we're so happy that you're here and you're, not, and you're safe to be able to speak with us. I know you were on your way to work that morning in those early morning hours. Tell us what it was like. Oh, uh, wow. It was just, you know, Saturday morning. It's uh, supposed to be a good day. I was uh, on my way to go. We, we go with friends. We work out. I kind of coach them. We're getting ready for the Army. And then all of a sudden, uh, we heard a siren. And for us, it's pretty uh, standard. We're used to it. But the raw, it was much more intense. The booms were much, it was just crazy. It was unreal. Uh, everything was much louder. Everything felt a lot more in just, just unreal. It was it was ridiculous. And then uh, I we made a run to get home, and that's when I started hearing about everything else that was going on. And so, how are your how is your family, your friends? Have you heard from them? Uh, at the time, uh, my mom was not here. She was in Italy. So I was alone. Um, luckily, she is here now. But my family is okay. Most of my friends are okay. I uh, don't want to get too much into it, but lost someone. Um, it's scary knowing how many people, how many friends of friends have been lost. People are constantly sharing images, asking if they've been seen. Uh, friends, family members. It's just not a situation that we want to be in. No, and I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, and we're seeing videos right now of you and some of your friends. Uh, can you tell me you said you were you're doing army training? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, being able to give to my to my country is the most important thing. I want to be a fighter like the guys that are right now protecting us and knowing that I can't be there with a weapon uh, protecting my family is is hard so what I did today is um, I decided to gather resources uh, food clothing water to go and give to the soldiers that needed it and uh, that video was while, while I was gathering stuff, there were some rockets. So, uh, you know, had to keep the morale up. So you're doing whatever you can to help support your country at your young age of 17. And I get the sense that as you're talking to me right now, you, you sort of feel like you, you wish you could be doing more. You, that, that is how important your country is to you. The civilians of this country are, are the country. It's the amount of reservists that went to help, the videos of people in the streets giving food, water to, these, to the tanks that are going to the border. As devastating as the situation is, we're going to come back from it. And Israel is our country, and we're here to stay. The civilians are here to stay, and, and that's it. Well, Barack, you're incredibly resilient uh, in your youth right now. And, and tell me, as you're trying to help these soldiers, you're doing what you can, you're bringing them food, anything. Do you feel safe at all? Wow. Um, there, there are moments, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in Ashkelon, the uh, biggest threat is definitely the rockets. Um, there have been terrorists in the city. They were luckily caught. Uh, today, though, whilst uh, driving, I had rockets hit meters from me. When I, in that exact video that you saw earlier, uh, there were two direct hits less than a hundred feet from us. It, it was 
it, it's scary. I can't lie. Yeah. But it's the ability to bounce back. I do not feel complete, 100% safe, but I know that eventually it'll be, you know, it'll, 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 it'll be all right. That's unbelievable. Uh, and thank you so much for spending the time uh, to talk with us and, um, and to tell your story. Truly, we appreciate it. And we're so glad that you and your family are safe and remain that way, okay? Thank you for having me. Of course. I want to bring our big story to our panel now. Wow. Uh, joining us today is our ABC News contributor and former acting undersecretary for intelligence for the Department of Homeland Security, John Cohen, ABC News contributor and former deputy assistant secretary uh, of defense for the Middle East, Mick Mulroy, ABC News political contributor and former Republican congresswoman for Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and Democratic strategist and president of Next Gen America, uh, Christina Sinsoon Ramirez. Uh, thank you all so much for being here with me and you just heard the words from this incredibly resilient young man there. Uh, Mick, starting with you, you know, largely this has been seen as a catastrophic intelligence failure on the part of Israel. What more are we learning there? Well, I think it's an accurate portrayal, unfortunately. Uh, operation of this size would have required a lot of logistic movements, planning, preparation, bringing in technical devices to do such things as jamming communications in Israel. And it, to, me, it, to me, as a former CIA officer, it seems like there would have been a lot of indicators that this was coming. Perhaps, and I don't know this, that they rely too heavily on sig signals intelligence and not enough on humans intelligence, but that is gonna be something that's looked at. And right now they don't have time to really deal with that, but eventually they will look back and try to determine just went wrong here. Right, it's reaction time now. So, John, intelligence officials are saying this is a very sophisticated attack for Hamas to execute on its own. Are there indications that Hamas received help from the outside? Well, there's a long-standing history of Hamas receiving support from the Iranians, from Russia, from other Gulf uh, countries in the Middle East. Uh, and I just want to echo something that Mick was just saying. This wasn't two or three guys in a truck doing an active shooting or setting, up a setting off a suicide bomb. These were uh, almost 1,000 militants we're hearing from some reports. Uh, it was a co coordinated attack. They were able to jam uh, communications. They, there was possibility some cyber elements. They were able to breach barriers along the border. They were using a combination of humans, uh, UAVs, you know, drones, uh, people on paragliders, as, long, mm -hmm. uh, as well as rockets. So there was some intense preparation that went into putting this attack together. Uh, and it seems to me, at least from my perspective, that it exceeded the sophistication capabilities of uh, Hamas or Islamic Jihad. This, th th I think they're gonna look really hard to see whether there is any state sponsorship of this attack. All right, and Barbara, to you, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell just wrote this op-ed in which he suggests that Congress could essentially assist both Israel and Ukraine in one legislative action. Does that seem likely, given the discord in Washington? I certainly hope at this moment when you see this kind of violent terrorism, and that's what it is, this is terrorism, that you can see that moment of people coming together and uniting. You know, so many members of Congress have traveled to Israel. So you do have that personal connection. You know, you had two members of Congress who were there, you know, Dan Goldman uh, from New York, Cory Booker, Senator Booker. So I think mm -hmm. there is a possibility. I certainly hope so. And Christina, to you, you know, after you hear uh, from Brew Rock, there's a 17 year old young man who had to run for his life. His parents weren't even there. And he's saying, I wish. I could be out there fighting right now for my country. Uh, what is your reaction to his story? I mean, the entire situation is a terrible tragedy on all sides. As soon as I saw what was happening, I just thought of the civilian casualties. The fact that people have been kidnapped, mothers, children, um, fathers, people are waiting for their brothers and sisters to see if they're safe return. Civilian tragedy and life being lost is at the core of what's happening and on both sides. So. I feel so much pain. I think a lot of people feel pain and fear and outrage for what's happened to the Israeli people, civilians, as well as people in Gaza. We have 
when you talk about Gaza, we're talking about one of the most densely populated places on earth. Mm -hmm. Half of the population are civilians. And so you have now thou uh, over a thousand people who have been killed um, and, and the vast majority civilians. And that's why we need movement very quickly on this issue to see a peaceful resolution. And that's, I think, also the consequences we're seeing of not having a Speaker of the House. Um, we are needing leadership in government in the United States right now that we simply do not have. The dysfunction in Washington has ramifications, not just in our country, but abroad. No, certainly as we watch one of our most staunchest allies get attacked here, John Cohen, Mick Mulroy, Barbara Comstock, Christina Sinsun Ramirez, thank you all so much for being with us. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.